Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about histamine synthesis and metabolism. So we're first going to talk about how histamine is produced, then we're going to talk about how it's metabolized and excreted from the body. So to begin, histamine is a biogenic amine. It acts as a signaling molecule in the periphery, but it also acts as a neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. And histamine is derived from the amino acid histidine. We'll talk about histidine a little later. Now histamine is produced by several different types of cells. It's produced by mast cells, it's produced by basophils, it's produced by ECL cells, and it's produced by histaminergic neurons. It's also produced by other types of cells but at a lesser amount. And when histamine is produced it typically gets stored in granules within these cells. And histamine plays important roles and functions in several processes. One of those is IgE, cell-mediated anaphylaxis, so allergic reactions. It is involved in the regulation of gastric acid secretion. And histamine itself is a profound vasodilator. And it also has other functions as well in the body. We'll talk about histamine's functions um, in more detail in a future lesson. So histidine, we mentioned this is the amino acid whereby histamine is produced. Histidine is itself an essential amino acid in humans. That means that humans have to get this amino acid from our diet. So it was previously thought that this was only essential in children, but now it's been found that it's also essential in adults. So some of the dietary sources of histidine include meats, soy products, nuts and seeds. There's a wide variety of sources whereby we can get histidine, but the main um, important point to note is that histidine is required from our diet. So if we were to get histidine from our diet and we needed to produce histamine, how does that happen? Well, it requires the enzyme histidine decarboxylase. This enzyme is within those cells we talked about earlier, the mast cells, basophils, etc. Histidine decarboxylase acts on histidine and will actually uh, decarboxylate histidine. It will remove a carbon dioxide from histidine to give us histamine. So this enzyme requires an important coenzyme known as pyridoxal phosphate, which is an active form of vitamin B6. And because it's a decarboxylation reaction, it re we removed a carbon dioxide, the structures of histamine and histidine are very similar. There's only one important um, section of the molecule that's different and it's this portion so we remove this portion of histidine to form histamine. So this step of the reaction is the rate limiting step so this is the rate limiting enzyme and it's performed in one step so histamine is produced from histidine in one chemical reaction. And this enzyme histidine decarboxylase can be regulated via several different things. One of the important inhibitors of histidine decarboxylase is alpha fluoromethyl histidine. So this will um, actually bind to histidine decarboxylase and it's an irreversible inhibitor of this enzyme. So when histamine is produced, it can get released into circulation, have its effects in circulation. Remember we talked about it is important in allergic reactions. It is a profound vasodilator as well. If the body is done with the um, histamine related processes and the body needs to excrete and remove histamine, how does it metabolize it and remove it from the body? Well, there's a couple of different pathways by which histamine is metabolized. One of them involves the enzyme histamine N-methyltransferase to give us N-methyl histamine. So this enzyme literally does what it actually says. It's a methyl transferase. So what it does is it actually adds a methyl group to histamine. This methyl group here on N-methyl histamine has been added. So we see here on histamine they add it on to the nitrogen on the imidazole ring. So because we've added a methyl group, that methyl group has to come from somewhere and that actually comes from the important cofactor S-adenosylmethionine or SAM. So S-adenosylmethionine acts as a methyl group donor 
it donates a methyl group to histamine to give us N-methylhistamine, and in the process, S-adenosylmethionine gets processed into S-adenosyl homocysteine. And S-adenosyl homocysteine can then be recycled back into S-adenosyl methionine or SAM via the activated methyl cycle. If you want more information on the activated methyl cycle, please check out my video on that. So once we have N-methylhistamine, N-methylhistamine can be acted on by the enzyme diamine oxidase. This is also known as histaminase. This will actually process N-methylhistamine into 1-methyl-imidazole-4-isetaldehyde. This enzyme requires oxygen as a cofactor. So what this does is it actually forms an aldehyde group onto the uh, N-methyl histamine. Now, there's also another enzyme that can um, perform the same, uh, the same reaction, but in a different place in the body. That is monoamine oxidase B, or MAOB. And this enzyme is located in the brain. It can do the same thing. It can process N-methyl histamine into 1-methyl-imidazole for acetaldehyde. So diamine oxidase, uh, typically in the periphery, it uh, will perform this reaction, but in the brain, MAOB can perform this reaction. Now, once we have 1-methyl-imidazole for acetaldehyde, it can be acted on by the enzyme aldehyde dehydrogenase and actually form 1-methyl-imidazole-4-acetic acid. This enzyme requires NAD plus as a cofactor. And once we've done this, we can, we've made this um, product more hydrophilic. So this product, 1-methyl-imidazole-4-acetic uh, acid, can then be excreted in the urine. Now there's also another pathway by which histamine can be metabolized. That is by uh, being directly acted on by the enzyme diamine oxidase to form imidazole-4-acetaldehyde. Again, this enzyme requires oxygen as a cofactor. And remember that this enzyme is also known as histaminase. Now, I didn't mention before, but this enzyme can be released from eosinophils. So eosinophils can release this um, diamine oxidase enzyme into circulation so that it can actually help to metabolize histamine that's in circulation. So once we have imidazole-4-acetaldehyde, it can be acted on by aldehyde dehydrogenase to form imidazole-4-acetic acid. Again, this enzyme requires NAD plus as a cofactor. Once we have imidazole-4-acetic acid, it can be acted on by the enzyme imidazole-acetic acid phosphoribosyl transferase to form one ribosyl imidazole-4-acetic acid. So it adds a ribosyl group to the imidazole-4-acetic acid. This enzyme requires ATP and PRPP as important cofactors. So in essence, it transfers a phosphoribosyl group from these cofactors to the imidazole-4-acetic acid, and it actually attaches it to the um, imidazole ring to give us this product, 1-ribosyl imidazole-4-acetic acid. And this enzyme itself can be inhibited by salicylic acid. Now, if we look at the two products, so the two metabolites of histamine, the only difference is the portion attached to the imidazole ring here. In this product, 1-methyl-imidazole-4-acetic acid, it is a methyl group, but in this product it's actually a ribosyl group. So that's the only difference between these two metabolites. Now, uh, these two metabolites can both be um, excreted in the urine so that their body can remove them. So that's how we actually can process and get rid of histamine. So anyways guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. This was a lesson on histamine synthesis and metabolism. If you did find this lesson helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.